the conceptual video lectures on the communication systems uh, topic uh, are started uh, with this video. The first topic uh, taken up uh, is on analog communication and this topic is divided into three parts. Uh, the first part is on amplitude modulation systems. The present video is uh, on amplitude modulation systems. We will try to first summarize the contents of this video. Uh, modulation process uh, is a foundation of communication system. The process involves uh, superposing message over a high frequency carrier for long distance communication. This video starts uh, with the type of uh, modulations available and uh, uh, what is the need for them. Different types of AM systems uh, such as uh, conventional AM which is also called double sideband suppressed carrier. The other one is double sideband uh, suppressed carrier. The first is this double sideband full carrier. Then the next one is double sideband suppressed carrier system DSVSC. The third one is single sideband suppressed uh, carrier and vestigial sideband systems are briefly covered. Governing equations for the power in each case uh, are given highlighting the features of each. The different types of uh, modulators uh, used for these systems are listed and verb detector used for conventional AM is explained with its uh, limitations. AM receivers uh, such as tuned radio frequency and super heterogen types uh, with their features and limitations are discussed. Towards the end a table comparing various AM systems is included. Since the contents are vast, only salient features are given covering the important concepts uh, needed for solving the gate problems. So it is uh, uh, try to uh, do the justification with the contents of the portion covered and uh, how they have been uh, covered here. Now we start with the presentation. Uh, this presentation is uh, we start with the amplitude modulation modulated systems. Uh, communication uh, is the process uh, where we want to convey the information at a uh, distance uh, point. That means if you want to convey the information to a distant point and uh, you may like to exchange the information also. So you need a communication system. Now uh, here uh, there is another uh, important uh, parameter that comes in that's a channel. Channel is basically the medium through which uh, the message travels and this medium could be wires, uh, this medium could be uh, links or it could be a free space medium. Then uh, information uh, which we want to send from one point to the other point uh, is said to be a baseband signal or uh, sometimes we also call it a modulating signal. Uh, example uh, for modulating signal is like uh, audio signal that is from 30 hertz to 20 kilohertz is an example of an audio signal. Uh, tone is a single frequency. Sometimes we modulate uh, the carrier by the tone as single frequency. Uh, modulation is the basically the requirement of the communication system. It is a process by which uh, some characteristic of the carrier is varied. 
as per the instantaneous uh, value of the moderating signal. Now we will see what are the different types of modulations which are used in uh, communication system in general like continuous wave uh, modulation CW modulation we call it that's a carrier here the carrier waveform is continuous an example is of uh, amplitude and the angle modulation systems the next is the pulse modulation systems where the pulse is carrier is a pulse type and uh, pulse uh, modulation systems can be divided pulse analog modulation systems like PAM pulse amplitude modulation PWM pulse width modulation and pulse position modulation here you notice here the variations in amplitude width or position they are continuous the second type modulation is the pulse uh, digital modulations these are fully digital modulation techniques these are uh, like PCM delta modulation DPCM differential phase shift uh, uh, pulse code modulation etc and um, the last one uh, is the uh, these are the fully digital uh, modulation schemes which are used uh, for the data transmission now most common schemes uh, as per the uh, schemes available for the continuous wave modulations like uh, amplitude frequency and uh, phase shift uh, uh, and phase modulations they are like uh, amplitude shift keying phase shift keying and uh, frequency shift keying and the phase shift keying so these are uh, the some of the modulation techniques uh, if uh, the data is in the binary form then you can the schemes uh, have a different name like uh, binary frequency shift keying and binary phase shift keying etc okay now we go to next slide uh, we try to see uh, here in this slide uh, that uh, uh, what is the need for modulation here what is the need for modulation now uh, need for modulation we start with the first point here like uh, first here is the multiplexing multiplexing means where you want to sim simultaneously transmit uh, multiple messages but if it is done uh, uh, without modulation that means it done at the baseband signal all the signals uh, will mix up and you will not be able to uh, transmit uh, so many signals at the baseband so multiplexing is a essential part and uh, for multiplexing you need modulation size of antenna that's very well known that uh, like uh, audio frequency range at baseband signal lie within 30 hertz to 20 kilohertz we have selected uh, we have taken three values of these uh, uh, frequencies here like if you take a 30 hertz uh, the lowest uh, frequency which gives lambda of 10,000 kilometers and if you take a antenna size of lambda 4 is 2,500 kilometers same practical antenna so if you take 1 megahertz the antenna size comes to be 75 meters still it is back and if you take a 100 megahertz carrier then it's uh, 7.5 meters so you know that uh, as the frequency is increased uh, the corresponding size becomes uh, uh, comes out to be in the practical limits so uh, at baseband frequencies really you cannot use the antenna if you are trying to transmit the signal without modulation and narrow banding uh, basically if you take a audio frequency suppose it is possible to built an antenna of this size then if you take a frequency of 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz and it's being transmitted directly one needs a very wide uh, band antenna a range of 1 to 200 uh, uh, frequency band 1 to 200 ratio of frequency bandage and uh, this reduces uh, to 1 to 1.01 
if the frequency translation takes place that means if the frequency is taken at 1 megahertz so this is uh, about the need for modulation now uh, we see the fourth slide now uh, we start with the conventional uh, ampli mod amplitude modulation system and uh, this modulation system we call it a conventional uh, AM sometimes we also call it double sideband full carrier system here the amplitude of the carriers change uh, with respect to the modulating signal okay so it's uh, said to be a linear modulation amplitude modulation is a linear modulation but the processes involved uh, are linear and uh, where the superposition applies now the carrier waves we are taken as like EC is EC cos omega CT modulating signals taken EM cos omega MT and uh, modulated signal ST is denoted by EC into 1 plus EM by EC with this here the parameter EM over EC is called a modulation index EM over EC is the modulation index also sometimes called depth of modulation if you try to represent this uh, signal in the frequency domain uh, we try to see that ST it has uh, 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 not frequency domain it's also a time in time domain representation uh, but uh, time that means uh, it is uh, modulated signal and it is we are just expanding it so it shows uh, that uh, there is a carrier component and then there is a cos omega c omega cos omega c minus omega m and this is cos of omega c plus omega m so there are two more frequencies have been added just sum up the modulating uh, frequency and uh, uh, carrier frequency and now there is the difference of it so these are uh, taken as set to be as a sideband uh, like one is said to be upper sideband and this represents the magnitude part of it this represents the magnitude part of it so this is a lower sideband and so being the upper sideband here mu EC by 2 where EC is the amplitude of the carrier wave uh, now we will see graphically how the uh, modulation takes place so uh, this uh, particular figure here uh, this figure here gives us uh, uh, the modulating signal this is the modulating signal which is sinusoidal at FM having the lower frequency and this carrier signal you can notice here this carrier signal is a higher frequency that is denoted by FC and uh, if the modulation takes place uh, and this you get the modulated wave modulated wave is seen here so in this region there has been no modulation so the carrier amplitude is not changing but uh, where the modulation signal has finite amplitude like in positive so the uh, modulated signal has uh, the envelope of this kind this is carrier plus uh, modulation this signal and this only carrier wave and uh, in this region there has been no modulation so this is said to be AM DSB full carrier so this is the kind of uh, uh, modulation uh, process now uh, if the waveform is available to us uh, how we can experimentally determine the modulation index and this is the modulated waveform <coughs> it is obvious uh, we can uh, determine the value for like here we call it uh, V min that is EC minus EM is V min and V max is EC plus EM so in terms of V max and V min this has been uh, indicated here that uh, mu the modulation index uh, could be written as v max minus v min over v max plus v min 
and uh, if you observe the waveform on the CRO, you can immediately measure the modulation index uh, of uh, uh, this modulated uh, waveform. Okay, now <coughs> uh, this is uh, the we'll try to see uh, the. <coughs> power in AM wave. So first we have taken a conventional uh, AM that is uh, double sideman full carrier system. So if you just notice power in AM is E square carrier over R then E square LSB that power in the sideband, upper sideband, lower sideband and power in upper sideband. Here are voltages on RMS and R is resistance of the antenna. So if the peak, you see the peak, so EC over root 2 would be the RMS value. So if you try to find out the power into the lower side band, power into upper side band, this power comes out to mu EC by 2 by root 2 whole squared. So this comes out to mu square EC square over 8 R. So total power is e square EC square over 2 R. This is mu square by 4 EC square 2 R and these are the corresponding powers in the side bands. So you can determine pay power total power to carried power PT over PC that is 1 plus mu square over 2. Okay this is power in uh, so this power in double side band uh, full carry system is 1 plus mu square over 2 into PC. Now uh, if you try to find the efficiency here that is power in sideband to power total power it comes to be the expression is mu squared over 2 plus mu squared you can very simply uh, der derive it and uh, if you take uh, mu to be 1 eta comes out to be 33.3 percent that means this is the maximum efficiency you can attain using this kind of modulation. If the modulation uh, modulated uh, by several uh, tones uh, then the total overall modulation index mu t is given, given by the under root of mu 1 square plus mu 2 square plus and so on. This will help you to solve the problems uh, where the multi-tone uh, modulation is uh, taken care of. And uh, here this uh, carrier and this LSV and USV these are corresponding signals. Now uh, we go over to uh, double sideband uh, uh, system, double sideband suppressed carrier uh, uh, system DSBSC. What we notice here is uh, here the carrier is uh, being suppressed, that's why it's said to be double sideband uh, suppressed carrier. Uh, we have seen that in the conventional uh, AM systems most of the power is contained in the carrier. Major saving of power takes place in the system and uh, efficiency of the suppressed carrier system is 100 percent while it was 33.3 percent for the full carrier systems. It is at the cost of uh, expensive and complex receiver but although efficiency is very good but uh, the corresponding receivers have to be expensive and costly because uh, you cannot have the simple envelope detection to be done uh, with the signals of uh, DSPSC type. So you can uh, see that uh, this signal can be empty into cost omega city that is just the product and you find out uh, you try to see the power in the upper and lower side bands you can uh, get this is the kind of power in the side band we have already seen then the power in the uh, suppressed carrier case uh, comes out to be mu square by 2 into PC. It is only uh, giving an idea that uh, how the power needed uh, for the uh, double sideband suppressed carrier is lower than the conventional AM 
although there is no concept of mu into these DSVSC systems and uh, this is used in uh, commercial uh, radio broadcasting the system is quite commonly used now uh, the other type is single uh, sideband suppressed carrier system uh, here also you can uh, find the power here because there is only one sideband either there is a lower sideband there is no carrier or you can take the upper sideband ok and uh, power in SSB is uh, square SB you can find out the corresponding power and uh, you get uh, this is still this is mu squared by 4 we say earlier it was mu squared by 2 so still lower power is needed uh, here because when the only you are sending the one sideband only because the other side of sideband also contains the same information it's redundant so uh, in this case uh, the kind of receiver which is used is uh, very complex so it's mostly used for point to point uh, uh, communication uh, otherwise it's not uh, uh, used for commercial applications and uh, this is the uh, here vestigial sideband uh, uh, it is uh, why vestige vestigial means this uh, vestige or trace of the other sideband is also sent here so if you notice here this is LSB and uh, this is the upper sideband part of the sideband is being sent or if you take uh, full USB part then the uh, lower sideband part of it is being sent here so in VSB bandwidth is about 25 percent higher than SSB uh, so it's a compromise between SSB single sideband and uh, double sideband systems and turns out to be a very attractive option for a TV broadcast because the TT TV bandwidth uh, channel requirement 4.5 megahertz so if you have two uh, both the upper and lower sidebands 9 megahertz but you can manage with 6 megahertz of the bandwidth so it turns out very convenient uh, option now uh, we just outlined the uh, EM modulators what modulator does it translates the message spectrum upward in frequency and demodulation does the other way that it does a downward uh, frequency translation Outward frequency uh, translation is achieved by multiplier and the based on multiplier there are different type of modulators like multiplier modulator using a log multiplier non-linear modulators using linear devices like that switching modulators some multiplication can be achieved by the process switching so balance modulator ring modulator is uh, quite common so use for generation of DSPSC wave it suppresses unwanted carrier now SSB generator uh, SSB modulator uh, using analog multiplier and bandpass filter it can also be used for VSB uh, modulation so this is very brief about the modulators uh, we are not going to detail AM a demodulation detection now we'll see here how the AM demodulation takes place to extract the baseband signal uh, for the case of the conventional AM uh, we are using envelope detector but for uh, DSVSC and SSB we cannot use the conventional uh, envelope detector we have to use uh, a coherent detection which is complex in nature and very costly uh, two types of AM detectors are there one is uh, square lab type uh, that is for low level of modulated uh, signals then when it's one volt then I can use the square law region of the diode characteristics and uh, this circuit gives uh, distortion and the linear diode detector the peak detector or vinyl detector these are the various uh, names for this uh, detector it's a very common it's a very cheap it extra extracts the envelope of the AM wave and it is simple and cheap using only one diode one capacitor and one resistor that is all it's contained with this uh, circuit now we can see uh, the operation of the envelope detector uh, we'll see that uh, uh, next uh, the figure is there 
Uh, so when AM amplitude increases, the capacitor voltage increases, and when it falls, the capacitor voltage is reduced uh, due to discharge through the resistor. So this is the input. This is a diode when the capacitor, uh, when the voltage input voltage increases, uh, the capacitor keeps on charging, and when it reduces, that capacitor voltage discharges through this uh, resistor. So we keep the RC RC time constants kept large as compared to the uh, carrier wave, uh, so that the these uh, ripples do not come. If you are taking that time constant very large, these ripples will not come. Otherwise, there will be ripples. Uh, if it is uh, too uh, high the discharge curve is more or less horizontal if the time constant is very high it will be more or less horizontal and the negative peak of the modulating signal would be missing and this section is also said to be diagonal clipping so the choice here is uh, that the tau the time constant should be much greater than 1 over fc and much lower than 1 over fm but ever condition above condition is possible only if fc is much larger than fm if it is not true then that condition would not be applicable okay so here uh, what we observe the modulated waveform and this is the envelope uh, of the waveform which is the detected signal you can see here this is here now we'll see how the diagonal clipping uh, takes place in the uh, next uh, slide that means uh, this this slide uh, here uh, what we observe here uh, this is uh, here we have taken a square wave uh, input as a uh, input uh, modulating input and this is the carrier you can see this uh, uh, envelope detection this, these are corresponding ripples but uh, for this portion for the negative peak of this negative portion of this waveform you can see you get a flat region and the clipping of the negative peak is taking place and that is said to be a diagonal uh, clipping and uh, uh, that uh, has to be avoided so negative peak clipping that's being indicated here okay now uh, we see uh, the next one uh, is uh, now about the AM receivers. Uh, they are very uh, two common type of receivers uh, are known like uh, tuned radio frequency receivers. Uh, these are the earlier uh, models of the receiver, and they were uh, quite cheap and simple. And but they are satisfactory at uh, medium frequencies, uh, but they are poor at uh, radio frequencies. So super heterodyne receiver is the ideal receiver and which is at the principle of heterodyning. Heterodyning means mixing. The advantage uh, uh, of these receivers, uh, super heterodyne receivers is that no variation in the bandwidth, high sensitivity and selectivity and high and channel rejection. And the one uh, very important uh, disadvantage with the uh, AM receivers is it suffers from the image frequency problem. So we'll see in the next slide that what is image frequency problem and how it is to be eliminated. How is the image signal? Here you notice here this is the local oscillator. This is the uh, input signal and this is the image frequency signal and this is the frequency axis so it is plotted. FCI is image frequency, FC is signal frequency as well as local oscillator frequency. You notice here local oscillator frequency is taken higher than the input frequency so uh, this is higher than the input frequency so FL minus FC is FI FL minus FC is that FI or FC is equal to FL minus FI so image frequency could be written as FL plus FI this FL plus F, FI this is FL and this FI so this would be the image frequency image frequency here is an FC plus twice FI that means image signal uh, occurs at the input frequency plus twice the IF frequency and that has to be avoided and uh, how it should be avoided it should be rejected at the uh, RF level itself 
once it enters the IF stage, then it cannot be uh, taken care of. So it should be taken care at that uh, level only. Now uh, this is the last slide here that says the comparison of the AM systems. We already talked about AM systems. These are the various parameters. This were conventional AM, DSB, SC, SSB and VSB. Carrier suppression it definitely doesn't have no carrier suppression. This is fully, this is also fully and uh, VSB uh, no carrier suppression. Okay, So this carrier is also being transmitted with this. Sideband suppression, no sideband suppression, no sideband suppression, one sideband completely and one sideband suppressed partially. And uh, bandwidth is twice FM, this also twice FM, this is FM for SSB. And uh, VSB is a good choice uh, between the SSB and VSB. So its bandwidth is between FM and 2FM, between SSB and SSB. Now cost and company, this uh, huge cost and complexity in the transmitter and low cost receivers. But once you are using these uh, 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 for conventional AM, even the uh, high power transmitter having the huge cost could be tolerated since the corresponding receivers uh, which are uh, needed uh, are of low cost. So it could, uh, it's very convenient to use in uh, commercial uh, radio broadcast. Okay. Uh, then about the other schemes, simple transmitter but costly receivers are common for all. Uh, so in use uh, commercial uh, radio broadcasts and commercial radio broadcasts could be partially used commercial radio broadcast, broadcast but uh, this uh, SSB is used only for point to point uh, communication since the receiver is needed as uh, quite complex the uh, receiver and uh, and for uh, we use uh, uh, VSB uh, transmission we use a VSB transmission for this uh, that means uh, TV uh, is using the vestigial band transmission. So this is about uh, all the uh, material which we try to cover. Uh, it's, uh, although it's uh, uh, quite a big video but uh, uh, we have tried to see uh, the uh, portions uh, where uh, the gate problems are appearing and try to uh, cover some of the uh, basic concepts uh, uh, which are uh, very important for the understanding. Okay, thank you very much.